Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to show you today is my Tent Smith's wall tent. This is an 8x10 canvas wall tent. It's made from Sun Forger canvas. It is a little less than 8 foot across, a little less than 10 feet deep, but it is an 8x10 configuration. It has 30 inch walls. It's a very simple tent to set up. Wall tents have been used since probably the Revolutionary War for fixed camp or longer term sheltering structures. You can live out of a wall tent fairly comfortable for a good long time as long as you have the ability to put a stove inside that tent for inclement weather. And a tent like this is very simple to set up in that it really only requires two poles and a ridge. There's different ways that you could do that. Okay, so in this configuration, I have it set up so that it has one ridge pole or ridge beam that is a two by six and two two by four uprights. And that's really the only poles that you need for this tent. So you could make those on the fly if needs be in the woods and just carry the canvas. And the canvas folds down small enough into a package probably about this big into a sack that it's made for and you could put that on a sled in an ATV, in a canoe, whatever the case may be and you could transport this fairly easily. Now the contents may be a different story as far as transporting goes but the structure itself is fairly easy to transport and everything else is held up by ropes to include the walls themselves that are 30 inches high are all just tied out with ropes of stakes. So it doesn't take a lot of paraphernalia to set up a tent like this. You could also use two branches upright this way with a ridge pole down the middle and tie it from the outside if you chose to do that. But this configuration works well and again this is something that you could actually live out of for quite some time and set your camp up so that you had work areas outside the tent for cooking in fair weather for hygiene and things like that, for working on crafting projects to build things to make your camp life more comfortable, splitting wood, things that I have set up around this permanent camp. So what I want to show you today is I just wanted to kind of show you the tent itself. I want to show you a couple little tips and tricks with the ropes and I want to show you the inside of the tent as far as the fact that it does have a built-in stove jack so that you can put a stove in this in the winter time. Okay, so we'll discuss more about, you know, what I have in this tent and things like that as we go, probably on the next video, but I wanted to show you this stove jack that's set up inside this tent, and it's set up for three inch pipe, and it's got a flap on the outside that covers it over, that can drop down and be tied off so that you can put your stove pipe through it, and then in fair weather conditions and you don't need a stove, you can just pull all that down, set it to the side like I have now, and close that off and it just gives you that much more floor space inside the tent if you don't have the stove set up when you don't need it. So here's the outside of the back of the tent. What you basically have is you have a flap here, that's Velcro, that opens up and reveals that stove jack and then you can just roll this up and it has a toggle and loop here so that you can secure that and set your stove up inside just like this so it's out of the way and then when you take your stove out and you want to close the tent up it's as simple as putting this flap back up and it flaps on the outside as you can see which is going to allow the rain to run off of it and then you just close that velcro and your tent's closed in again now the way i have these ropes set up all of them are set up basically on a loop with a piece of oak toggle in the rope and that just creates friction this direction when you tighten it up so it allows you to tighten and loosen these ropes as the canvas stretches and contracts it makes it very easy to just pull everything taut and it's held by friction and that gives you a really good reliable system that you can use over and over again for your tent and then it just loops over the top peg over the top pole and around your stake at the bottom and you can keep these ropes in this configuration all the time. And again, this could be made from natural material split from a hardwood tree. This just happens to be a one by two oak that I cut these out of ahead of time to put with my ropes. 
Now the other thing I want to show you here is something that you could actually do with any tarp that you were using that has grommets on it. And what I do here is very, very simple, but it's very, very effective. And it keeps you from having to tie anything. You've got a grommet hole here that's your 30 inch wall. And all I do is I take a loop or a bite of the rope and I put it up through the grommet. And then I have a knot on the end of that rope and I just put it up through the loop just like this and then pull the rope down taut on top of that loop. That's not coming out. It's putting less stress directly on the grommet and more on the corner of the fabric here like that. And it's putting that stress across here instead of straight onto the grommet. And then I can just put my rope on the stake and I have my same tightening device on there. And I can just pull that thing taut and get that wall good and tight. Next thing I want to show you is the proper way to form a wooden stake. And this is just a one by two grade stake. But you could make this out of any split plank of wood if you're not using metal stakes. And what you're going to do with this, if you've got a saw, you can come down a couple inches from the top and you can just put a saw cut in here about one third of the way through the material. If you don't have a saw, just come in here and give yourself a little bit of a plunge cut. And then cut up into that plunge cut, just like this. And you're just going to have to continue to do that until you get that notch as deep as you want it. On the stake. If you've got a saw, you can make very, very quick work of that. Now this is where... I talk about dry wood blades versus green wood blades. You see how aggressive this blade is? It's not going to cut a piece of wood this thick on a fine cut at all. It's just not going to. So I'm going to need a smaller saw for that. So part of what I have in my kit here is I have this multi-tool. This multi-tool has a saw blade in it right here that will do a lot finer job of cutting and then I can just open up these jaws get this thing in here tighten it down and now I can come in here and cut that notch so again I cut about one-third of the way through the material and then I can trim that out with my knife or my axe either one so I'll set this multi-tool aside for a minute. And this is an old antique multi-tool that actually belonged to my grandfather. With several different bits in the handle. And these were the original multi-tools. Now I'm going to come in here with my axe, and this is a plum hammer hatchet. It's got a claw hammer on the back side so I can pound nails with it, and it also has an axe to do that type of work with. Now I'll come in here, trim this out to my stop cut. there. Okay. So now we've got our rope notch cut in here. Now the next thing that's a key element with a stake is this is not just good enough because if we hit this with a hammer this line right here is going to split completely off. So the next thing we have to do is we have to make another cut on this stake right across here to protect that area from breaking out. I thought what I'd do real quick is show you while I'm working on this 
and I know I'll get questions about this. This has a screwdriver, the saw, a small chisel, two different size gouges, and then it actually has two different size chisels. And then it has a reaming type device here. So you've got quite a few tools in this handle to make this a multifunctional woodworking tool. And all of those tools fit inside this handle when they're not being used. So we'll get the lid back on here and we'll get the saw blade back in real quick. We'll make our cut. Okay, so now what we have is, and we can trim this up with our knife or our axe or whatever, but now we have an area that we can pound on top of that the shock from the blow is going straight down here and nothing is going here that could break this off the stake. So now when we put our stake in the ground for our tent here, we'll be pounding on top of this and that line of shock will be running down the stake and it won't be over here chipping this out. Just like that. And this gives us a solid spot to put our rope. And then all we have to do is tighten up our toggle. And we have a good secure tent stake that's made the proper way. Okay guys, well I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me today for just a quick video on a little bit about where this wall tent came from, what size it is and who makes it. Again, that's tentsmiths.com. I wanted to give you a little bit of a tip or trick on the ropes and how to make proper stakes because I think that's important. And then we'll get into, as we go into the series, we'll get into what's inside the tent or what I'm using inside the tent as a permanent or fixed camp and how much gear that really is going to entail. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.